Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bob Baldwin and welcome to a whole new step by step. We're going to be doing this Harrier GR1 GR3. It is by Kinetic Model Kits. Um, it's in 140 ape scale. Um, now this is going to be an intermediate step by step so we're going to kind of leave out all the basic stuff and just go into that intermediate advanced kind of realm of teaching you all these different modeling techniques. Um, this will be available on the Genesis Models website if you're interested. I'll be doing a couple of little clips here and there on YouTube just to uh, keep you guys in, um, interested but really what I'm really sort of going to concentrate on this one is I know with these Harriers, if you've ever built a Harrier, if I get the instructions out, it's probably best to sort of quickly sort of show you what I mean. We're going to be doing some, um, shall we say, advanced um, um, filling, sanding and scribing, right? Because I know with these Harriers, right, if you've ever built one, the problem area you're going to have is just just here, right? Um, where this joins on the fuselage section just here, it's never 100%, right? Um, you know, you can have big gaps, raises, dips, right? And without really giving it some filling, sanding and scribing to really make it look like it's one piece, which takes quite a bit of filling, sanding and scribing and several layers and doing it in the right way um, to get it to look as if it's one piece and getting that scribing just right. Bit tricky, I want to sort of show you um, that for instance. Um, we do have like an all round sort of camo pattern on this, two, two colours to, to do as well. So, um, you know, the spraying would be quite interesting. These birds could get quite dirty, so you know what, we're going to probably have some nice weathering to go along with it as well. Uh, and it is a tricky sort of shape, the Harrier, so probably going to have some fit issues here and there and how to go about them. Also, got um, a whole bunch of aftermarket parts to go with this. Um, all this is available in the store, by the way. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be using all these at 100%. But um, what we've got here, we've got the Masters. We have some nice, uh, a nice pit up tube. I don't know what it is. Just me, maybe personally, but I really do like to have the nice pit up tubes when it comes to my builds. I do. I think they're just a lot, lot nicer. Um, two types of weapons. I'm not quite sure here, but we do have Eddard's um, GBU 10 Power Way 2s and the Mantra um, 155 rocket launchers. Not sure which ones I'm going to go with. I know the kit uh, does have the rocket launchers, but they don't kind of look like the right ones to me. And I've done a bit of research. I'm not 100%, but um, these ones I do believe are the uh, more accurate ones to go with. Um, another interesting one with this build, I mean, um, these, these things have been out for a while, but I haven't actually used them. So this step by step, we're gonna be looking at 3D decals, right? For all our instrument display panels, we're gonna be um, putting these decals on, which are 3D. So it might be interesting, first time trying them. We'll see how they go, see if they're any good, um, see what the cockpit looks like. So that's going to be a good one. Um, probably as always, I mean, we've got the UK version of the um, Remove Before Flight Tax. Uh, obviously, we're going to get some canopy masks. Um, and then I do also have, um, we've got some um, photo wet seat belt seat belts just here as well as we do have a bit of an interior set i mean as i say i'm going to be using the 3d ones but this set also comes with all this exterior stuff as well so i'll, I'll probably have a little look at them and see if we'll use them or not see if it's worth it to go go get them but yeah a nice bit of aftermarket parts to go with this so um, be a nice intermediate build um, so all there is left to do now is let's get started so let's get started with the build. Now the first thing you want to do is familiarize yourself with these instructions. When we have things like the photo etch instructions, the actual instructions themselves, um, we've even got these um, 3D decals and stuff. We really want to sort of know where we are and what we're doing. It's going to seem a little bit confusing at first, but I've, what I've done basically to start with is um, actually got out all these pieces i've done some test fitting of um sort of looked and to see where all these bits of photo etch is going so 
for instance if you look at the instructions right there's areas where it wants you to like sand away some of the detail ready for bits of photo etch right so i've just got a red pen and i'm just sort of marking these areas understanding where everything's going doing a bit of test fitting um, so when we've um, marked these out right we just want to remove these bits of the detail that's on here uh, you could start off with a blade for the more sort of raised areas like so and sort of maybe just chop off maybe the raised buttons mainly right we don't want to kind of chop too much Right, but to get most of it out the way, just so as we're not doing loads of sanding, and then good idea to get a um, a nice sanding stick out. Right, maybe sort of like a, a medium kind of a coarse kind of thing, maybe a two hundred ish. Right, and we just want to keep sanding until that detail sort of disappeared, and so as we um, have got a nice flat surface for our decals to go down. Uh, instrument display panels, wherever they've gone, a little bit more tricky. I have lost them though. Ah, here they are. Um, lots and lots of areas, you know, just make sure, I mean, these sanding sticks by Albion Alloys, these um, really thinner ones, we do have these in store. These ones are really, really good for, you know, getting in these tighter places and sanding these areas back. Um, you will notice that the little, kind of radar dome thing there in the middle that's kind of recessed so once you've sanded it all away you may want to put a little bit of filler in there and just lightly sand it um, for the decals so that's a nice bit of prep work also just a little bit of a you know this is going to be um, a bit of a niggle really at these 3d um, prints here that we have no instructions no placement instructions at all couldn't really find anything on the website as well so this is all we have to go on is this picture so what i'm gonna to have to do is go off and do a bit of research i've done some already looking at cockpits and stuff but for instance see this little piece that we have there that has nowhere for it to go right what i mean by this is it is supposed to sit right there right flat right there looking right at you but there is nothing there for it to actually stick onto so um yeah it kind of makes it a little bit we might have to do a bit of scratch building or do something with it but we'll play around with that um next up i want to do i want to prepare my surfaces as i say so what we're going to do here is going to add a little bit of texture maybe some creases jazz up uh um actual ejector seat just here so what i'm going to do all right just getting out some scissors this is um some toilet roll right and what i've done is i've cut a little bit out but you want to sort of remove one of the layers because you've normally got like two layers with these so you just want to remove one of those layers you want it to be you know pretty nice and thin then what i'm going to do is with some scissors cut to a general size that looks about right for our ejector seat all right so i've just cut that to generally about the size all right we could tidy things up later so that's about the size we want uh, then just getting out a palette or something bit of water all right just a little bit of water any sort of pva glue um this is just some hobby pva glue nothing special right bit of an old paintbrush as well and we're going to make a very sort of thin mixture all right very nice and thin all right almost less than milky all right doesn't have to be that strong at all and what we're going to do first is i'm actually going to get let's move this out the way of the camera i'm actually going to get um some of this nicely mixed up pva glue and water and paint that on first and then we can actually sort of pick this up and we should 
be able to start laying this down. Right. Now this is oversized, but what's going to happen is, is when we're all dry and done, right, this will all go sort of nice and hard. Maybe I need a little bit more PVA glue more mixture there. But it'll go nice and hard, come in with a nice sort of sharp blade, and we can nicely trim it all up and get it all nice. But I'm just sort of coming in with the water edge, the water and PVA glue. I'm just kind of pushing it down into all the nooks and cranny areas. All right, making sure this is nice and down. All right, as I say, doesn't matter about that bit of overlap. All right, and then when you've got it sort of nice and generally down, I mean, already we're gonna have a bit of a texture on here just from the fact of having um, a bit of bog roll on there. And then what you could do, you could um, use the brush and maybe start to kind of like push at areas, right? So we can push in and maybe a bit of a crease here and there, maybe trying to kind of put them where they would be, right? And you could just play around with this as much as you like because you can sort of remove the creases, put the creases back in, or however you want to go about it. All right, maybe that one's a little bit too much, so I'm going to just maybe dab that down a bit. All right, and we could just play along with it like so, just to give us a little bit of a nice bit of texture, and that should look rather, rather cool. Um, as I say, just let that dry, and we'll just cut around the edges with a nice um, blade. So, got all my little pieces all nicely sort of cut up, a bit of filler in there, right? That should nicely sort that up with a bit more sanding. Now, I'm going to show you, we're going to kind of really go for it now with some photo etch. So, um, always good idea, some sort of a solid surface. Um, you can buy these things with, uh, where's it gone now? Ah, found it. Um, nice little sandwiching. I mean, you could use kind of anything. It's just solid surfaces, just a sandwich. Um, bits of photo etched together. Um, now I'm going to just cut off this little piece here and I'll show you why I'm going to cut off that little piece in a sec. Um, always good when cutting off photo etch, you know, um, sandwich them together as you can see and then always good to sort of cut them, cut them with a blade, right? No dragging, no sawing, nice little rocking motion there, should cut that little piece up. And then we sandwich it again. We want to butt up where the tab is and the pieces, and again, rock that again. And hopefully, maybe a little bit more of a snippet there, we should have a piece that has been cut off the fret. Right, little tiny piece there. Um, I do like to get out some tweezers for this. Um, Tamiya does a fantastic foil for things like photo etch right they do these um diamond foils for photo etch really nice smooth really really good for photo etch um bit of a tweezer all right something that we can sandwich these little pieces together right and by doing that what we've done is every step of the way right from cutting it off the fret to sanding back any of these little bits, the piece has always been sandwiched together, right? Because we don't want to have any bends in these kind of things. Well, not all the time, but most of the time we don't want any bends. And by doing the sandwiching, everything stays nice and straight. All right, so this tiny little piece here, right? has now been cut off. The reason I've picked this is because I want to talk about our 3D decals. Now the problem with these 3D decals, right, is if I can maybe just bring you in and show you, right, the piece I've cut off is the piece that we're looking for and I'm missing and losing everything again. Oh, there it is. Right, um, where this goes with the photo etch, Right, it's going to glue on here. Um, maybe I'm best sort of showing you maybe this way. 
right, but there's lots of these little examples of small pieces we can just focus right that is supposed to glue on there now being photo etched that's absolutely fine problem is these are 3d decals all right not exactly something that's going to stick on a little ledge and sort of overlap right so the problem we, we're going to have to deal with here is if we want to use these 3d um decals which i do i want to try them out um what we're going to have to do is offer get a bit of plastic card and make a nice little ledge there for our bit of decal to go on or in this case i mean we've got these little pieces here we're not using these um bits of dolls and stuff with our photo etch you know we've already got it so i'm actually going to use this as our little template i'm actually going to glue this on maybe sort of glue it on upside down so it's just nice and smooth and shiny the one side and then we can put our decal on there right if you get what i mean i know it's a bit of a process and it kind of already put a bit of a downer on these 3d decals but I'm, I'm gonna keep pushing away and see if they're any good um so hopefully you're looking forward to seeing how they turn out so i've shown you how to cut some photo etch off of a fret right so what i want to sort of show you now is a little bit of bending now as we enter into the world of bending photo etch things can get a little bit expensive right these photo etch bending tools are not cheap we do have some in the store i think they're by trump and they're around about 40 50 uh 60 quid i can't remember but you know they're not cheap for these things but they are really really good and they're very very durable tamia does some really cool stuff as well these are rather rather nice some bending pliers uh, both long and short um in all honesty you know what it is good to have both sets because these can come in use in some cases these come in use in some cases but you know what um you know you don't have to go off and buy loads and loads of expensive stuff do you know what tweezers tweezers can probably um do just as good a job if you are careful right so i'm going to do a bit of bending here quick simple one here the instructions i mean a bit of a strange one they want you to um it just shows you a picture here of this piece and then it shows a ballpoint pen right and i've kind of gone off and done that and i think they wanted me to make those circles so it kind of makes it raised hopefully you can see there it's just kind of raised and made sort of these oval shapes um if that's right or not i don't know you let me know uh but a quick one on the bending we can sort of use say these tamia ones right we've got a bend that needs to come in there it needs to go all the way over and it is a simple case of sort of lining up and holding down exactly on the line where the bend needs to be and then you can actually just use your thumb pretty much bend that most of the way um, 90 degree angles or whatever angle this one needs to go all the way over so we can just sort of press that down now and as you see that kind of adds a nice little bit of extraness to it so our little piece here you know fits in there after we've removed the old detail hopefully making that look a bit cooler then we have something a little bit more complicated this is where lots of bending comes into play um, and you've got to be sort of careful now as you can see i've already done some bending we're making quite a bit of lots of boxes all in one bit of photo etch so with with this kind of thing you've sort of um it's kind of messing about with this tool quite a bit and getting everything in the right way um, so you've got to do a bit of thinking now maybe let's get you in a little bit closer so we're going to sort of start off let's try doing this so we're getting our first line just here um, these tools are nice how you sort of use this open or close so i'm just going to get this lined up i do find that actually these corner bits are quite cool for stuff like this and we're going to do a nice 90 degree bend nice and easy with the finger um, you can um, with this piece it's not really so necessary it's kind of good to use the corners where you've got a bit of play around the bottom but you do get one of these long long blades that come with it right so for instance if we were to say do 
a bend say on here say this bit noisily there all right just sandwich that down all right you could come in and the whole idea is that it helps you sort of lift up the whole piece all right and we can then do a nice 90 degree angle just there all right but the problem is as you could see we've got lots of boxes um, and lots of shapes going on and the problem is we're going to get to a point where how do we actually bend these last little bits right so sometimes you know because hopefully you might be able to see here I'm trying to get this in there but um, and the other bit of photo etch is getting in the way sometimes not so bad to come in with these mini ones but you could do that but the problem is We've got this area raised, so this area raised here, so that is going to, oh, you're off camera there. Um, this side's raised, so it's going to butt up, and we call bend it. So, and we can't really come in this way. So it, it does make things tricky. You've really got to think about how we go about it. So um, what we could do is probably in this case, is actually get it like so. And then we can bend like that. Do you have to be careful because you do want to get as much surface area as you possibly can. Um, then we are sort of getting to a bit of a problem with this one because as you can see this here um, there's not really much way of getting into that bit there so this is where I like to sort of you know we've got to kind of get a little bit creative as I say this is quite a complex shape right so it might be a case of like pressing down with something like some tweezers to then be able to oops, get the blade the right way around to come in like that and there we go and we can bend them up like so but again we've got like other problems just there with folding inside there um, but we might be able to get lucky with this one by because we've got quite a bit of grip we could probably just bend that over like so and as you can see that is closing up to be quite an, a nice box shape um, it's oop, a bit hard to see but it's not quite closed down right so a bit of glue is probably not such a bad idea for that stage um, yeah most of the time you know it is sort of easy folding but that was just sort of showing you different little ways just think about it um, use this tool in as many different ways don't be afraid to kind of press down in one spot like I showed you with some tweezers um, <coughs> or even use the tweezers using the, the um, Tamiya pliers all good now there's another one that I want to sort of move along with now and that is let's do a bit of gluing so now we're moving into a bit of glue. Now when it comes to photo etching glue, literally loads and loads of different glues we can use. Use everything you have in your arsenal. Don't limit yourself just to one type of glue. Uh, I'm gonna be starting off with some thick and thin super glue here. Super glue can be a little bit tricky with photo etch because it glues instantly and you get this metal put down and it glues instantly and it's not in the right space and you've got to try and peel it back up. You're gonna bend it. Uh, and the last thing you want to do is be bending um, photo etch and ripping it up. So uh, I've got a little picky up tool here. Apparently you just make it a little bit moist and we can pick up little pieces like so. Ooh, that's falling over, turning it upside down. Uh, we've got this nice bit of photo etch that we've put in here. As you can see, I'm moving along. Um, I've already cut it off the fret, but the first thing we want to do is just test and make sure it fits in there nice and snug. Always do that before you do any gluing because you will save yourself a nightmare. All right, and then what I'm gonna do here, the thick super glue. Um, as I mentioned about super glue, super glue, you know, it is good because it glues it solid, down, quick, fast, move along, right? But <coughs> if it glues too fast and you haven't got time to position 
right it can glue in the wrong position really really quickly and you're a bit screwed so uh, just getting out a super glue applicator these are like bits of photo etch um, i do believe we sell some in the store by eddard right i'm going to get this thick super glue and because it's thick super glue we can place it just in the middle nice little blob nothing too special nothing too um too much pick up our little bit of photo etch right and because it's thick super glue we can place that down right maybe get out a blade and just make sure it's positioned all right and that is looking good all right nice and easy um, another one is the fin super glue now with the fin super glue think of tamiya extra thin cement right nice thin great capillary reaction right now in this instance right we have this little piece well this big piece that's gonna go on here like so right i'm actually gonna get out a peg right just to make things a bit easier and i'm gonna sort of lock this down all right with the peg but i'm just gonna make sure it's in the perfect position before i start applying any glue all right and that is sort of looking good i would say yeah looking quite good so again coming back with our super glue applicator dipping into our thin super glue we can come along and just touch these edges and what's going to happen is it's going to suck in and under these bits of photo etch all right giving us the same sort of results and there we go so just go in all the way around and the peg should nicely lock this down into place and hopefully I've got enough super glue in on there so when I lift this up we're all nicely glued down so this is turning into a nice bit of photo etch oh and by the way um, we was messing about with this before as you could see lots of nice bits going on there but uh, if you remember we wasn't quite closed down and this is where actually while this is all together this is where maybe a bit of our thin super glue we can just sort of touch it maybe in a corner here and there if I could get you to focus on camera there we go to sort of touch it into a corner you know and you don't really need a lot for this to sort of glue down so that should now if we hold it a little bit be nicely sort of glued down and together so that should be good and I'll just kind of do the other little bits that are, are sort of not quite pressed down um, but there's loads and loads more super glue now we are at this stage as you've probably noticed we're sort of doing all the stuff that isn't printed or re or painted or anything like that we're doing all these little bits that are going to go on before we do any spraying just like with our 3d um, decals here these are already painted and stuff so we want to get everything painted and stuff before we actually put down um, for instance you know our seat belts for our ejector seat you know these are all pre-printed pre-painted so to, so to speak um, and those will go on after we've done the painting so um, it is a bit complicated having all these different sets and all these different instructions um, but we're basically just going off and getting all the stuff that's um, not pre-printed or painted um, getting that glued down first then we'll spray then we'll put down the photo etch that has um, already been that's been printed onto it so let's move along with a bit more glue because there's a lot more to it than just using super glue 